Hello there, this is Andrew Tsai and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today I am sorting out this broken MacBook Air. And so this is a MacBook Air early 2014, 13 inch. And what ha what's happened is that the client's screen is completely broken. So you can kind of see here that the, the screen itself has suffered some kind of damage and it's, this is normally pressure damage of some kind and um, something's kind of well it's, it's been through a lot you can see even with this case and um, some kind of pressure has been applied to the screen normally at the hinge level or at the, at the actual screen itself and it's caused this horrible banding to appear and um, the computer looks like it's functioning just fine. So I can see the caps locks working. I can move the cursor on the screen and I can see that is actually functioning. But, um, and I've given a quote for the replacing the screen part and the ribbon itself. But what the client's opted to do is instead to buy a new computer. So this, this MacBook Air is um, probably over six years old now but they've opted for the new MacBook Air 2020, which is a really lovely machine. And the real issue is simply copying the user profile from this broken MacBook Air to the new computer. So normally, if you'd had a, a normal functioning Air, you would simply open user migration and copy your profile from one computer to the other. But since this screen is not functioning at the moment, we would need to get that screen functional so we can see what's going on. So that's what I'm going to show you today. I want to show you how to attach a screen to a broken MacBook Air and then copy the data to your new laptop. So what I've got here on my right is my trusty standard tiny monitor. You can use any kind of screen um, as long as it has the right kind of connectors. So what I'm using here is a standard VGA cable which connects to the back of this screen. And to connect this VGA cable to your MacBook, you're going to need to buy one of these adapters. This particular adapter is a VGA to mini display adapter. So you plug one end of this, the VGA end into the adapter here. And then you plug the other end into the mini DP socket on the right here. And once you connect that to your screen, what will happen is that the desktop of the computer will be extended to this side of the screen. So to get the primary display to send from this laptop to the screen, rather than just extending the display, what we need to do is plug in the charging cable and make sure the charging light is on. And then we need to plug a USB keyboard and mouse to the computer itself. So when we close the lid, what will happen is that the primary display will shift from here to there. If we don't have the power plug plugged in, the computer won't turn turn on, right? And we won't be able to see a display here. So this power plug is kind of essential at this stage if you're trying to get through this login screen. So now that we've got the login on the right, I'm gonna move my keyboard here, and then I'm just going to log into the account. So once I've logged into the account and I'm looking at the external monitor, all I need to do now is to navigate to Finder, go to the Applications folder, and then go to Utilities, and then use the Migration Assistant. And when I open this, this is going to make it ready for me to transfer my data all the way from this old laptop to the new MacBook Air. What I'm going to do now is show you the next stage of the process. So we've got the old MacBook Air ready to migrate to another Mac, and I'm going to open the new MacBook Air and switch it on for the first time. So when you switch on the MacBook Air for the first time, it's going to ask you for the language first. So I'm just going to select English, and then I'm going to select location, which is United Kingdom, and my keyboard layout, which is British. I'm going to connect to my Wi-Fi. So on the left side, I'm going to select from a Mac Time Machine Backup or Startup Disk and press Continue. 
And on this side, it's going to be looking for this computer. So what I'm going to do now is select this MacBook Air, which is this one here, and select that on the screen there and press continue. And it's going to ask me to update this computer in order to do the uh, transfer. So what you need to do is I would recommend just skipping this at this stage because it's not really necessary and we're going to continue here. So all this is giving you is a code which has to match with this particular computer and I'm going to show you on the right the MacBook Air. I'm going to use my mouse to select continue here to know that we're on the right code. What's going to happen now is this MacBook Air is going to check the data files from this old MacBook Air and see if they match up and if we want to transfer absolutely everything. So when we get to this stage, you'll see a list of applications, user accounts and settings and other settings with the sizes of them on the right. And if you want to copy all your data, just don't touch anything and press continue. And at this stage, we need to set a password as well. So these can be the same password or a new password. And then we accept the terms and conditions and agree. And then we let the transfer continue. So as you can see here on the right, the data is transferring. And at the moment, the connection is peer to peer. And that just means that the, the Wi-Fi from the old computer here to the new computer is connecting via a Wi-Fi connection, not through the router, but through direct Wi-Fi to Wi-Fi on the laptops. And it is possible to make this faster. So at the moment it's doing, it's estimating one hour, 21 minutes to complete the transfer. Um, at this stage, you can actually connect up both computers to ethernet. You can actually connect um, an, an ethernet adapter here and an ethernet adapter on the MacBook Air, and it will perform a peer-to-peer -peer ethernet network or you can even connect it to the router directly. Um, even at this stage, if you did that, the current connection would actually change to Ethernet or peer-to-peer -peer Ethernet, and that would make it faster. But I'm quite happy waiting an hour and 21 minutes for this to transfer. I believe it's around 120 gigabytes of data, so it won't take that long. I'm just going to let it be. So now that the migration is complete, all we have to do now is go to the quit button and then the computer will restart. There are a couple of other methods you could use to migrate the data. One of them is to obviously use a time machine backup, which you would have prepared earlier um, before the screen was broken. Um, another method as well is to extract the solid state drive by taking off the back, taking off the solid state drive, and then um, putting it in an enclosure and then inserting it into the new MacBook Air 2020. So now that we've migrated the data from the old MacBook Air to the new MacBook Air 2020, we should really decide what to do with this old MacBook Air. So obviously one of the main things we can do is replace the actual screen and do a proper repair of this computer. Now this is perfectly possible, but given the age of this particular MacBook, um, it's probably not worth it economically. Um, another option is to continue using this computer as a desktop. So if I you know, close the lid and um, use the external keyboard and mouse as a, on, a, on a permanent basis and use this screen, I can place this as if I would put a, you know, a Mac Mini or a Mac Pro and keep it as an external computer because this is all working fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, and you can continue using it like a normal computer. It might get a little bit hot because it's not designed to be closed the entire time, but um, it would function as a serviceable computer, perhaps as a secondary computer or maybe a computer for a child. Um, another option as well is to sell the MacBook uh, as a broken device. So uh, ideally first we would wipe all the data using the recovery drive, and then you would pop this onto eBay and sell it as a spare repair um, item. So this would allow you to uh, get some money back from the device. And, you know, to be fair, they do sell for quite a lot of money, even if they are broken. 
um, lots of people harvest parts internally for the MacBook Air, and um, some people will do the repair, even though it's quite an old laptop. And, um, you know, it's a good way of recovering some money. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful, and I hope that you um, like and subscribe. And if you'd like to see any more tech videos, please keep a watch out for my channel. Thank you.